All right, what's up? What's up? It's your boy Carcino here. Let's get into it. I don't know why I feel like it's like like six, seven o'clock in the morning. Okay. At least a partial notification went out to people. Hopefully they get it. I see Outlaw is in their house. I knew Outlaw would be here. Let's see if I can get some more light. All right. The NFL is the new WWE. I agree. Mm-hmm. So let's get to it. No, I haven't seen the pivot yet. I'll, I'll get to the pivot in a minute. We're here to talk about the WWE. Everybody wants to know what's going on with Vince. Is the company sold? What's happening? Everybody, for all these days, I'm like, let me find out what's going on. Then I'll let you know. My uncle is a shareholder of WWE stock. Don't get all excited. He, he's not like a major shareholder. <laughs> His wife purchased like 0. 0. 0.0000. <laughs> just, just enough to say he owns a share in WWE stock. So don't go writing home like, man, he owns WWE. No, it's nothing to write home about. Now, Right. The cash app is Carcino. I'm glad you said that. Cash app is Carcino. You want to donate? There you go. Super chat work. Let's get into it. Where do we go from here? Oh, damn. Oh, okay. I see what that is. They chose Wednesday. That works for me. <sighs> My housekeeper be here. So that's what that text means. All right. Now, let's get to it. Hit the like button and subscribe. I don't know why they had you like block. Outlaw. That won't happen anymore, Outlaw. You now have your stripes. Now, here we are about the WWE, right? Let's get to that. Now, all of you were asking me about all of this last week and they said well let's get to the big saga sale what's happening Vince was out of the company due to the allegations that were damaging the stock because here's the truth 
they were planning on selling anyway. They were going back private as a company. Vince, um, it didn't matter who he touched back years ago. The company was losing money left and right. It was expensive to keep putting on these shows raw. And what people don't realize is that this is every week. It's 24-7. They don't close. They got house shows. They have new wrestlers coming in. And guys are just not bringing in the revenue. And this is this has caused them to have to pull back on some of the pyrotech that they have in their shows. It's costing them to lack in paying their big stars in these major contracts. They're just like, we can't afford to pay you that. And these guys are leaving. And they're going to AEW and getting money. They're like, we're just going to play pay the known bread winners and that's that and the writing has been terrible but we'll get to that y'all want to know what's going on with the sale and all that right so let's keep it about the sale then we'll get into all the ancillary things that's going on over there right so Vince was unanimously named chairman and his daughter, Stephanie, was, you know, uh, was, was a co, what you would call a co-CEO. Mike Kahn, a lot of people who don't know, was a co-CEO also, but he actually was the CEO. Mike Kahn ran the company. Stephanie was just the name. She never ran anything. She was the on-air personality. Okay, uh, Triple H actually did things. That Vince showed him the way. And he wants him to take over eventually when Vince don't want to do it anymore. Now, the two of them have butted heads before. And what people don't know is she had already, like, quit. She had took what, uh, what they call a leave of absence. So when she took a leave of absence from WWE, a lot of people didn't know she had took a leave of absence. She went and had ankle surgery and, and took this leave. She was preparing to go then she was thrown back into being the vice president i mean the she was thrown into being the executive chairman she had to take it like on the spot the netflix deal with um the documentary they was finna do on vince mcmahon all of that's canceled the stock is looking terrible and everything's going bad the board decided we had to make an immediate decision to stop the bleeding. Then on January the 10th, Vince McMahon was unanimously named the executive chairman again. And Stephanie then resigned from her position as co-CEO. And Mike Kahn is now just the CEO. And that was on January the 10th, just four days after he returned to the WWE's board of directors. We moved into the wee hours of the rumors that the Saudi public investment fund. Right. Was being taken private. The company was well, the, the investment fund is already private, but the WWE was being taken, you know, private. That sparked an outrage online. Right? How oh, dare them? They sold. They sold into the Saudis. Now Elon Musk. Elon Musk is in, um, I think he's in that fund. 
with the Saudis. He might be, he might not be. It's a lot of partners in that fund. But the Saudis would own it. Um, and they have the bigger position here. A lot of people feel like they're against the sale. And that Triple H and Stephanie, they're, they're upset about this sale. They didn't want the sale to go through. And they are going to walk if this happens. Now, <laughs> Stephanie had ideas. The board did not agree with her ideas. Her father does not agree with her ideas. But the Saudi rumor is premature. It's not false. It's premature. Because the WWE continues to have to have uh, the Rain Group, uh, Kirkland and Ellis, and J.P. Morgan Chase, their financial banking group, to help out with the potential sale. It makes it all while feel like they're months, if not days away from any transaction. You know, AEW was with the Khan family, right? They were in a pool of potential buyers for WWE. And I tried to tell people this before. Ted Turner. Billionaire Ted. Who owned WCW. And Vince ended up coming in and buying it from, from him. And he stuck it to him. Like he really embarrassed. Tried to embarrass Ted. Like this is my field. Wrestling's mine. And Ted didn't like that very much. Ted Turner is the largest owner of land in the United States of America. He owns damn near all of cable television. That's the reason he let it go, because he gets paid off WWE. And it would have been a conflict of interest for him to own a wrestling company and to be able to run cable, to do the cable deal. Now he can have a wrestling company again. Now nobody gives a shit <laughs> of it being a conflict of interest. When they say you're in competition with them, now no one cares. So now he's financing the people that's running wrestling at AEW. And he's ready to go after Vince's head. And at the end of it, he wants Vince out. Ted Turner is one of the richest men in the world and has been one of the richest men for a long time. A lot of people say, oh, you see now, now Ted Turner doesn't do anything, but Ted Turner and his team, Ted had anything on the table to be done. Getting rid of Vince would be it. A lot of you don't know that past. A lot of you don't know that history. I said he's the largest owner of land in the United States of America is Ted Turner. So let that sink in. Yes, he started CNN. He started that channel before he owns TNT, TBS. Now he gets paid off all cable. He signed a deal that would give him payment over all Cox communications. Like he gets a percentage. He used to have the Turner Classics where they showed all the old movies every year. Now, when Stephanie like suddenly departed, um, the talent 
you know, they didn't know what was going on. To them, they was learning when y'all learned. Okay, I don't know what that is. But they was learning when everybody else learned on the internet. So Triple H had held a talent meeting last Friday to say, I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to be here as head of creative. He told the team that they're having discussions um, that's about creative, but he's been told he had the final say in the first hint that the company's founder, you know, they could be meddling with the process, but that's not going to be the case. H got final say, right? So Vince is not there to Yeah, but H isn't there to to do what he's doing. You know, like he's not there to cause that type of disruption, disruptions. Okay? There's a lot of reports out there that's saying, oh, Vince is back in there and he's telling H what's going to happen until he's on back on TV and all this stuff. The SEC revealed that uh, Vince McMahon changed the company bylaws when he came back. This is what you need to know. He no longer needs a board approval for his actions. He changed that within the company when he came back. So the board cannot make a decision to get rid of him ever again. See, this change is the basis for a recent investor lawsuit against him that claimed that Vince McMahon is trying to impose his personal will on the WWE and its brand, right? So this change is the basis for that recent investor's lawsuit. Three days after resigning, Stephanie posted she had ankle surgery, right? And that CEO, Nick Khan, met with the heads for Disney, ESPN. That was doing when they had the college football playoff championship game, right? Disney and ESPN are some of the people who are thinking of purchasing the WWE. Their names are in the running. So it hasn't been sold to the Saudis yet. The Saudi is, that's, that's there. Disney now is on the table. And now you have ESPN. So Nick Khan is sitting down having these meetings. Right. Well, the company um, and all of this happened in a week's worth of time. You know, uh, it's barely gotten started. So it's about a remainder of, you know, all the coverage of pro wrestling world and how much, you know, dark it is with the business side of story. There's not an outright sale yet to the Saudis that could raise its profile to another level of interest where you can combine like the, you know, human rights record <laughs> with sexual harassment claims hanging over Vince. Now, if a sale puts him in charge of creative again, what's going to happen to H? I'm not going to sit here and try to tell you on whom the WWE is sold to. I'm telling you that it's a long process. No decision has been made. 
but here are all the parties that are involved. Fox Sports is in the runnings with ESPN and Disney and Comcast right along with the Saudis. Now, what they're promising him is that if they are to purchase WWE, he will re he would want uh, obviously to allow him to retain some control. But I'm quite sure they're not going to want to show Vince as much, like let him be behind the scenes and not on television. And Vince might have a problem with that. So if that makes sense to you, I understand. Don't forget to hit the like button. Subscribe to the page. Comcast is NBC. Yes, that's one of their affiliates. So if Comcast is to purchase it, yes, it could be back on NBC or Yes, we, we said all of these things about Disney. ESPN and Disney is the same company. So when I say ESPN and Disney, what's up, D-Style? No, here's the thing. Vince ain't going to leave it to anybody. <laughs> Vince, is, Vince wants control till he dies. He can't, he can't not be in the mix. So when he came back, he changed the rules. The board can no longer fire him. So that rules in place that nobody on the board could fire him. That's right, outlaw. Hit the like button. Can nobody fire him? Vince is he's untouchable right now. Well, I won't say untouchable. He could be touched. <laughs> but he can't, um, they can't touch him, in other words meaning that they can't make any rules to come in and change anything anymore. I'm not telling you I'm thinking he's going to be in there. This is what H told creative. I mean, he told the talent. He had a talent meeting. He told them that he, nothing's going to change. He's still in control of creative. That's what he's been told. He will have final say. Don't worry about it. When he came back, H, so he didn't, he had to tell talent, this is where it is. But those things could change with new ownership if a company is sold, that all of that is back up on the table. Yes, he changed the bylaws to now the board, the board can't vote him out. So now, if a lawsuit comes into place, uh, the shareholders are going to sue Vince. <laughs> now, the shareholders, we, they saying, hey, we can't get you out of here if you cause us problems. Then we're going to sue you. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. Vince will be back in creative guarantee. <laughs> hey. I can just tell you what I've learned. Y'all asked me to do it, and I said I will go in there and I will research it. I'm going to find out. And, man, it's crazy. See, no deal is done yet. But Comcast and um, Fox Sports and Disney and ESPN and them, they are coming with competitive offers. They know that the Saudis are involved or the WWE could have leaked that story about the Saudis being involved just to get more interest or get the word out there that they're looking to go private again. Well, see, they... Um, 
you know, Adam Cole. He ended up being the biggest surprise for AEW. That came out of nowhere. You know, Cole did remind you of much what you missed in like the past five months. You know, he's like great at promos. In case you guys don't know, Adam Cole is excellent with promos. So he does a lot of promos over there and they feature him a lot. Oh, no, Vince don't have a problem with, with Triple H taking over the company. That's not it at all. He loves Triple H. He wants a, he want to give it to H before he give it to his son. <laughs> Seriously, he, he wants to put it in his child, children's name, but he wants H to run it. H is a former wrestler. You know, he's going to get it. Stephanie and Shane would still be some type of shareholders in that company unless it's sold outright. Now, if it's sold outright, which Stephanie totally disagrees with, um, then that'll be a whole different, you know, thing altogether. But like I said, when you saw the AEW take off and you start seeing Cole's promos and all that. And they was talking about, oh, well, he had two serious head injuries and he saw the doctors a lot of times. He's got all these dizzy spells. You know, he, he's too much of a risk. You know, he came out, he thanked the fans for supporting him and all that with the bad news and the AEW locker room that he was healthy, he was back. And then you start seeing the intensity, the determination, like the new Adam Cole to set up a, a whole baby face run in AEW. They did that right with the promos and everything. Now, if he could remain healthy, he's going to give AEW a new baby face that they could use. Um, they got who the, who the other guy they got? Uh, what's that? Ricky Starks. Uh that Jungle Boy guy still got some work to do. And, you know, it's just what it is. I, it's a lot of wrestlers. I can't remember them all by heart, but he's got the momentum going right now with his monologues. Darby Allen, yeah. Luke Perry's son. Yeah, MJF, another one. Um, so now, Here's the thing. They think blood sells. And this could alter the deal with Disney yes, and Fox Sports. Comcast, not as much. Now, there's a lot of criticism about having the, remember that Rampage street fight that they had with, uh, who was that, that, that Nightingale chick? The Willow Nightingale and the Anna J. And the Ruby Soho, when they did that match and it was all bloody, it was the bloodiest female match anybody had ever seen in life. <laughs> Y'all remember that? That looked like a, a, a ECW match.
Oh, and thank y'all for the super chat and thank for everybody that hit the cash app. Uh, when we get a lot of cash apps, that's when we do the uh, cash app questions. So we start answering the questions people leave in the cash app. Oh, Lorenzo Holloway, he's the wrestling guy. I could tell right away. He's on top of all of it. He was, yeah, that was last week. <laughs> that's that's the thing. Blood sells to the wrestling fans. You know, but here's the thing. The backlash is that other sponsors are not going to like blood. Right? They're not going to like blood. You're going to see. You got. Um, you got Fox. They have certain restrictions on blood. So the cameramans probably won't be able to follow that. And then ESPN and Disney. Even though Disney is trying to get more lenient, even with uh, Deadpool 3 coming out, you're going to still see a lot of blood. So with all of this going down with the blood and everything else, and the Rampage match. Now, if they say we're only going to do blood on pay-per-view events, that would be different, but then you won't. You'll have a problem airing those on replays. Now, Comcast could do that deal and do it. The Saudis, I don't think they would care. And well, they can do it on TNT and TBS. That's why I say they won't have a problem doing that because they come on at ten thirty at night on a Friday night. And the fans like it, you know, like every once in a while you see blood and for some reason they love to see blood and that makes people believe the match is good because somebody's bleed. And it makes it people believe like this is where the action is, like the, even the women bleed. <laughs> so that's the way they'll go. And I remember that impact Then that hard to kill pay per view. Um, then they had the the Josh Allen. That's the no Bully Ray and Josh Alexander. And they had the Hardcore War. Remember Tommy Dreamer and uh, Alexander's wife. You had Ray getting beat the hell down, <laughs> and they delivered the low blow. Ugh. She gave a hump, gave the husband the opening to retain the championship. But Josh Alexander proved he can deliver, right? And he came through and stabbed the walking weapon, Josh Alexander. A lot of people don't know about Josh Alexander. But it showed that he can cross over. He reminds me of Rick Steiner because he wears the wrestling headgear. So he reminds me a lot of Rick Steiner. Hard to kill on Friday the 13th, baby. Yeah, hard to kill. That was something else. That match was crazy. That ladders, tables, chairs. And it showed he could take it. Yes, we are aware Disney owns ESPN. 
So when I say Disney and ESPN, I mean them as one unit. Because that's where Disney would want it on ESPN. Uh, we'll never see another new Jack. Well, that's, a, that's probably true. There's a lot of them out there, though. That's just rugged. And they they don't care. Like, remember Mickey James? The last rodeo with uh, Jordan Grace? And they had the knockout world championship. And Grace hit her with, like, everything. <laughs> and the two did a superb match. Um, roll up, quick pans, finishing moves. I mean, that was a great, like, they took time coming up with that. That took work. That's a great match. You know, that Jordan, Jordan Grace and uh, Mickey James, that was a fight. Now, that's how you do it. And I was like, man, that's something else. Oh, the, the snooze fest. No, no way. I don't know. That was that uh, Jonathan Grissom and Eddie Edward. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the thing. Cody Rhodes will return at the Royal Rumble, right? It feels more certain that he's going to win uh, the match at WWE and We'll figure out that him and Roman Reigns championship match and all that stuff is going to happen. Uh, the thing with WWE is you can see they script six miles down the road. You know how this is going to end up, right? So the American Nightmare has declared for the men's Royal Rumble match. And... They're having Raw 30 next week. Uh, Raw is coming here to Chicago, too, in a couple months. I might go to that one. But uh, they're having Raw 30 next week. And The Rock, being the only member of the all generations of the bloodline. Mm. Yeah. They're going to have the all-generation bloodlines. <laughs> so it's going to be crazy how they do this. I know. I know. It's, it's the business part of it, right? It's always the business. He said marks are dumb. They feel like ratings don't matter, but it does. Tanaka. Please God and love when you do wrestling. Yeah, I mean, that's my, my background coming up, man, wrestling. My uncle is 
diehard in the wrestling that his wife bought him stock in WWE. I mean, we didn't, it wasn't just a WWE, like he was, we went to every wrestling match. Like as a kid, I was at all these matches from Bruiser Brody when they had the, the, the mid, the A, what was that? AWA, the Midwest Circuit, Mid-South. It was just wrestling, wrestling, wrestling. Could you imagine if we had the access to wrestling like we do, like we do now, now like with social media? I've never got no work done. <laughs> I wouldn't have functioned in school at all. It was wrestling when wrestling was over. We wrestled outside. And uh, I, I had every move down pat. <laughs> I mean, some things happen on television that was real in real life. Like, I remember when Vince McMahon fired uh, Jeff Jarrett live on TV. That was live on TV and he fired Jeff Jarrett. But Jeff Jarrett was really getting fired. <laughs> like, he went to and bought TNA. And you remember that? He was the co-owner of TNA. Jeff Jarrett, baby. That's J E double F J A double R E double T. That's double J. Jeff Jarrett. Listen up, slap nuts. Boy, that used to be his calling card. I used to have that t shirt. Listen up, slap nuts. But I will give WWE credit for one thing, one bright spot that they have in the sky that's bigger than the talent that they got now. NXT. NXT has been the lifeline for the past three years for WWE. Yeah, it is, T. It is crazy. That has been the line, bloodline for all the great house card matches. See, that's what people don't understand. These house card matches is what you need to see. Ooh, Lorenzo Holloway, you are missing out. <laughs> JC Jane and GG Dallin. Falling off the top of the rope at the same time to both win the battle royal. And now the champ got to fight Rox Roxanne Perez. That was perfect. They they brought, uh, what's his name, Gallus back to keep the, the pretty deadly from running the gauntlet. Come on, man. <laughs> the gauntlet just picked up business in the tag division. The ropes breaking on the ring to push, uh, uh, what's the name, Brian Breaker and uh, Wallet into the steel cage. And then they came off a bit odd, but it, it was believable, right? And this feud is just getting started. This thing is heating up. NXT got it cracking right now. How can you not see that? Oh, Mercedes Monet appearing on Dynamite. That wasn't happening. I don't know where that came from. I heard that lie. Um, they named, uh, what's the name's partner before that even happened? Um, what's her name? Saranya or whatever? Nah, man. That's what I'm saying, man. Isn't it? NXT has had some great storylines and matchups. Y'all just probably haven't been watching. Oh, yeah, I'm good as long as I don't see Vince McMahon. I mean, I'm done with football, but uh, I'm through with not football, but the NFL. I'm done with them.
No, I hardly got any sleep. I was angry fighting in my sleep. Uh, Dynamite was great, right? Did y'all see um, the, the first hour of Dynamite? Yeah, because of the game and everything, I had to like wait. But yeah, to see uh, see the first hour of Dynamite was something. Well, it's a high profile TV show. You know, they got all this stuff with people coming back. They had two promos, some cameos. Yeah, it got boring a little bit after the first hour, but other than that, Dynamite was cool. Yeah, MJF, he'll be all right. He just, they, you know, these are the young baby faces. They trying to help these guys out. You know, they're going to, they need somebody to, a baby face to bring them out. So, it'll happen. Dan Housen, uh, Dan Housen, if he gets to, to speak more on TV, put him in with, uh, with Housen, that's great. I'm with that. Well, we have a supersized version of the Hurt Business and uh, MVP and Atmos. You know, they're all in the fold, which would be a powerful group. Like Bobby Lashley uh, was on the right to call, what's his name? Uh, Theory. You know, uh, What's that do? Seth Rollins, you know, he need to get freed up from the roads and WrestleMania, you know. A lot of people like uh, Jungle Hook. <laughs> Hook and Jungle Boy got yeah, Jungle Hook, baby. They got great free futures as single wrestlers. They raw talent, but uh, it would be a, it's a lot of work to get them there, but the best fights that you've seen, um, I missed it. I haven't seen the, the Becky Lynch and Bailey fight. The feud has been been interesting to see. Bailey, who was who I couldn't stand for a long period of time. <laughs> like I used to hate Bailey so much, but she could actually wrestle now. Like she's actually gotten a little stronger. She when I first met, like Bailey, that's what she used to come out with the little say and all that. Oh my god, oh my god, like a car selling stuff, all these colors and it's Bailey. I'll be like destroy her, stomp her head in the ground. <laughs> I couldn't stand Bailey. <laughs> I couldn't stand Bailey at all. Hit the like button. No, I like Bailey now. Yeah, yeah, when she started getting some edge to her, and yeah, I'm like, hey, here we go. Ah, she didn't got, but she got stronger. She got more seasoned. Um, but they had a steel cage match, and I missed it. I didn't see it. But I'm telling you, on the Hard to Kill show, if you, that Friday the 13th, if you missed that, 
Mickey James fight, that was the best match of the whole show. That last rodeo fight, if it's on YouTube, definitely check it out. That was the best match of the night with Jordan Grace. That was awesome. That's some real wrestling right there. Now we can get into other things about WWE. Their actual lineups have been terrible with creative. They got storylines that are going nowhere. That's my problem. Um, they have terrible storylines and they either end too fast or they drag on and it's like unnecessary. And it's like, this is the dumbest thing ever. And you're stuck. Like you guys have watched wrestling and you've watched WWE for a long time. Probably more than me. Because I don't have a lot of time. And I'm quite sure. You guys have seen it a lot more than I have and witnessed it a lot more than me. So you know what it really looked like and what it should look like. Yeah. But see, they, they gonna bring in, um, uh, what's his name? Because he's returning too for the Royal Rumble. Like we we can see how that's gonna jump into the play. We already went through that with WrestleMania. You already know that uh, the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes is returning for the Royal Rumble match, and he's gonna win it. And then it's gonna be a Roman Reigns thing, you know. So. Oh, yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Raw 30 is next week. This Monday of Raw, better watch it. Because <laughs> this is going to be the, the whole thing leading up to WrestleMania. It's going to be a big hit upside everybody's head when The Rock and Roman Reigns go at it on the, you know, Raw 30. Then you're going to see Cody Rhodes get involved. And it's going to be Cody Rhodes versus Roman Reigns. Come on. We, we, we know where this is going to end up. <laughs> right. You know what this is going to be. <laughs> we, we, that's what I'm saying. Creative. You see it all the way down the road. <laughs> we see where this is going to go. Cody Rhodes is going to end up being world champion in WWE. He's going to be Roman Reigns down the road. I've already seen this setup. It's not even something that our all the writing team might as well just throw it out. Because we already see that. <laughs> we already see where it's going. And now we just got to watch it play out. So this is why I mean creative. It's because Roman Reigns he don't know how he can't his um monologues are terrible he's not a monologue guy that's why they tried to put him with a manager so the manager could talk for him because his monologues are terrible so they, they made him a bad guy you know this is my yard the big dog Ugh, they try to give him a tagline they try to do everything to try to help roman reigns get there because it was like a lot of people can't stand him they're like well we just hate this dude this is my yard. <laughs> Everybody can't stand this dude. <laughs> I was like, dude, they hate him. It's like Chicago and John Cena. They hate John Cena here. And that has a lot to do 
with his feud. And John Cena's like, man, Chicago, why y'all hate me so much? Like, he went out of his way to try to win over Chicago. Like, he really did. He came out his last match with Cesaro that he did. Man, they had like an epic wrestling match. Like a real wrestling match on Raw. That Cesaro and John Cena, they gave Chicago a real wrestling match. John Cena showed you he can really wrestle. That he ain't just a five knuckle shuffle. <laughs> and, you know, he, he actually had moves, but. CM Punk is the reason why they don't like John Cena. Because everybody be punk, punk, punk. No matter, punk was out for two years. They still was in there. Punk, punk. Punk had the greatest music, greatest monologues, greatest setup to all of it. He was the anti-wrestling, the anti-system guy. And he exposed everybody like... You're a phony. You're a bar. This guy paid for this. He was exposing everything. So that's why everybody loved Punk. He was great. He was the anti-system wrestler. And that was great. Didn't matter about his finishing move. CM Punk could sell it. That's what he was about. Oh, this is funny because this is the video Nicholas Jacobs would have died to be on this live stream. <laughs> he was the only one not here. And I said, <laughs> I said, I said, man, this is it right here. This is the one he would love to be on. Uh, Jenny and Chris, they doing all right. Jenny's rumming it in because her Packers got put out. And now since Tom Brady out, I guess she felt like she won something too. All I got to do is show her Tom Brady go like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All I got to do, send him Brady with the seven rings and his shit up. <laughs> can't tell a man with seven rings. You can't, you can't even tease a guy that got seven rings. I'm sorry. Just don't, don't work. Oh, no, 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 See, that's what I'm saying. Um, Triple H had the talent meeting on Friday. So when he talked to everybody Friday, he explained to the talent what was going on and what was his situation. Now, the Rain Group, Kirkland and Ellis and J.P. Morgan Chase, that has all the money for the WWE. That's where they banking. These, they're heavy hitters. Okay. This, so any sales has to go through those three. The Rain Group, Kirkland and Ellis, and J.P. Morgan Chase. Those three major banks are invested into the WWE. So those three would have to be involved in the potential sale. So it makes it like they're about months away from a transition. Um, there's a lot of players at the table. 
you have Disney slash ESPN because they're connected, um, Fox Sports, Comcast, and the Saudi group. They're all at the table trying to purchase WWE. Even um, the group that owns AEW, the Khan family, they're in the pool of potential buyers for the WWE. But I can tell you right now, Vince is not going to sell to the Khan family. Now, <laughs> now here's the thing. Now, the Khan family was being backed by Ted Turner. You know, they actually have partners that they want to purchase, you know, WWE with. Vince wanted to get control because he knew, I, I don't want anybody to have an idea of selling to AEW. And that's the way Vince would look at that, is I'm selling my company to AEW. They were like, no, 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 it's the Khan family, it's the turning, and no, no, no. <laughs> That's not going to happen. <laughs> no move's going to happen without Vince. So Vince was brought in because there's big money at stake with Vince being at the helm of the company. So now Vince is on board. He changed the bylaws. To now the board can't get rid of him anymore. <laughs> so that's that's changed. So now the board's power to have him removed is out. They can't vote. There'll be no more voting. Democracy is now dead. You ain't getting him out of there. So Adam Cole will be the biggest surprise hit for the AEW, I think. So, yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah, the investors are going to sue. <laughs> that's the, Immediately, that's what he's being sued for because he, he came in and changed the bylaws. If they sell to Saudi Arabia, they the WWE is dead. Uh, no, Triple H ensured that he'll be in charge of creative. That's what he was told, that even if they bring someone in to work on creative, Triple H will, he's not going anywhere. Well, if you think about it this way, they was like, well, you know, wrestlers like Gigi, you won't be able to see those cheeks no more <laughs> if they sold to Saudi Arabia. <laughs> She's going to be in a long skirt, covered up. No, this is just how it works in a sale. It's not like a, a fast sale of the company. This is what generates all the interest and in, in getting all the parties. I'm quite sure they will want a United States-based company to have it and own it. Um, Triple H isn't leaving unless he's removed from creative. So if he's removed from creative, which he's told he's not doing, and they're not having him do that, 
that's not going to be the case. So, he said, well, He's like, if they sell to the Saudis, then Logan Paul will be the <laughs> will be the new two-time the undisputed universal champion. <laughs> so do they sell to the Saudis? <laughs> Logan Paul is now your universal champion. Oh man. <laughs> that cracks me up. Oh my goodness. I'm telling y'all, man, this is crazy. No, Stephanie never was in charge. Let me tell you something. A lot of people making a lot into this Stephanie McMahon thing. Let me tell you. Stephanie McMahon was a co-CEO at all times. She never was CEO. Nick Khan has been the CEO of WWE. Nothing's changed. So now it's just the, the co is moved. He was co-CEO right along with Nick because he want her to have that experience and have the name there. His family ran. So, no, Nick Khan handles the business. He just sat down with ESPN doing the whole college football thing and sat down with uh, Disney and ESPN over the weekend. So, and they talked about potentials and offers on the table about the purchase of WWE. So, make no, here's one thing for sure WWE is for sale, they are going back private. That is going down. That's 100% the plan. And they're losing money and costs. They had to draw back on a lot of explosions and pyrotechs. Um, a lot of wrestlers on the cards have been cut in a lot of these house matches. There's like no, in a house match, you don't see all the flash, all the lights, all the shows, but all the big shows, they're not really doing it like that, like they used to. They pulled back on a lot of pyro. They pulled back on a lot of stuff. It's not that many um, vans going out. The sets are a lot smaller. They used to have a lot of sets. They're not doing a lot of sets now. Um, you're right, Nick. It's not about the money. It's about re regaining power. You're absolutely correct. He wants to be in creative again and doing what he normally does. But here's the thing. Uh, he's always been in charge of creative. It's just that the company's losing money and it's not going in the right direction. Uh, Mike Rotunda, yeah. Mike Rotunda and Barry Windham. He's married to Barry Windham's sister. So that's why they were... They were in that together. Like, they were the tag team company. I mean, tag team champions for a while. Barry Windham and Mike Rotunda. Uh, the Windham family is deep in wrestling. 
Um, what's her name? Liv Morgan. Like all the sons are in that wrestling. All the Wyndhams. Yep, Bo Dallas, all of them. Bo had to retire because of them injuries, but Liv Morgan, Bo Dallas, Bray Wyatt, uh, Wyatt, who's supposed to be coming back as a new character. We don't know if he's going to come back again as the Fiend or what. Um, but yeah, the Wyndham family go all the way back to the dad, the grandpa, they're wrestling royalty. So their roots are going to be in the wrestling for a long time. He's like, you just learned me something. I didn't even know they were related. <laughs> yeah. Mike Rotunda is married. He was the brother-in-law of Barry Wyndham. And he decided to go into wrestling too. Like, I might as well go into wrestling. <laughs> so he was already married before he went into wrestling. Yep, the Wyndham versus the Von Erics. And I'm here to tell you right now, um, I have the first actual shot of the Von Erics movie. There's a Von Erics movie. It's, it's in production right now. And the person that might be playing Kevin, either they playing Kevin Von Erich or Carrie Von Erich. And that's Zach Efron. Oh, this Von Eric movie finna be off the chain. <laughs> if they keep it the way I, I think they finna do it, it's finna blow everything out the water. This Von Eric movie finna be serious. You gotta you gotta remember the Von Eric dude, like all their sons, they have what two suicides, if not three suicides in the family, and then David died, then Mike Von Eric died. Then Chris killed himself. Then Kerry killed himself. I'm like, what the is happening in the Von Eric family? Dude, that was crazy. Kerry Von Eric used to be my favorite wrestler at the time. Yep, the Texas Tornado. Yeah, Kevin never wrestled with any shoes on. Kevin Von Eric, he didn't wear shoes. He lived in the woods right now. I swear, he lives in the woods, <laughs> sleeping in trees. Kevin Von Eric, and got his sons all, like all Kevin's sons are into wrestling. But Kevin Von Eric, that dude be in the trees. Sleep. Kevin Von Eric, look, he, he just, he Tarzan for real.
No. He said he's playing Kevin. Okay. I know it's Kevin or Carrie. You say you just looked it up. Did you see him? Let me see if they even have it out now. If I got it, I'm probably late. They got him as he looked more like Carrie. Yeah, they got the same thing I got. But he looked more like Kerry than Kevin. There it is, y'all. He like he's way too massive to be Kevin Von Eric. He's built up like Kerry now. But yeah, this is the photo I got. Yep, but uh, yeah, I need to get to work here, so this was cool. We sat back, we talked wrestling for a minute. I felt bad, Nick could only get in for a little bit. Thanks to everybody who super chat, everybody who up my cash app. Shouts out to Kwame Brown Bus Life, Kwame Brown Bus Life 2.0, One Crack News, Screen Fiend. Well, we doing some things over there. I'm finna really get cracking over that. We finna start hitting stuff with a bang. I'm just finna hit y'all up on the Patreon a little bit. Give y'all a little something else to think about. And I'm out.